Good morning. How are you? I am very happy to be with you today. And uh, I am back on track answering your questions every day. Most of the questions are coming from readers of You Are the Universe, um, Discovering Your Cosmic Self and Why It Matters. I'm very grateful that you're supporting this book. You can uh, send me any question though, whether it's from the book or not. And the questions should be sent to info, I-N-F-O, at jio.com. Once again, the questions should be sent to info, I-N-F-O, at jio.com. They are placed in a queue, and then I answer them to the best of my ability every day in the order that they are received. So today's question is from Nigel Gold, Goldthorpe. Nigel Goldthorpe. He's um, uh, commenting on the laws that, uh, of reality that I uh, spoke about uh, a short while ago. <clears throat> he says, it is interesting when we consider law number five that neither matter can be created or destroyed, uh, then that begs the question why we consider the Big Bang Theory as a plausible theory in the creation of the universe construct as we know it. This breaks the law of conservation of energy. Um, if we use the electrical, electric model of the plasma universe, which has a very solid science model to explain what we see, but not necessarily how the universe was created, it makes a lot of sense. It poses a very interesting question. If you don't know how the universe was created, then by whom? Thank you, Nigel. So uh, I'm going to do my best to answer this question in a way that I hope will make uh, sense to you. Lag lag, the email is info, I-N-F-O, at jio.com info at jio.com. Okay, so now let's ask, answer the question. So when I was a medical student, um, I came across an experiment by two neuroscientists. Um, they ultimately won the new Nobel Prize. I think one of the scientists' name was Wiesel. You can look it up, W-I-E-S-E-L. What they did was they took a group of kittens and they brought them up in a room that had only horizontal stripes. They took a, another group of kittens and they brought them up in another room that had only vertical stripes. And when these cats, uh, as they grew adults, uh, the kittens grew up to be <laughs> wise old cats, one group of cats could see only a horizontal world, and the other group of cats uh, could only see a vertical world. So one group of cats could not see furniture legs, and they bumped into them. The other group of uh, cats could not see any horizontal uh, bars, and so they bumped into them. So as far as vision was concerned, their perception of the world was a result of their interpretation of what they experienced as kittens. So, you know, in a room with only horizontal stripes, somewhere in kitten consciousness, <clears throat> an interpretation was made that everything looks like this. And somewhere in kitten consciousness, another interpretation was made that everything looks like this. And then the brain adjusted its neural connections to reinforce that initial conditioning of visual perception. So from this experiment, we can say that uh, in this experiment, visual perception was a result of, um, of um, training. It was a learned phenomenon. It was a conditioned response. But this is true of all perception. All perception is a learned response. In humans, of course, all perception is a result of cultural conditioning and other conditionings, including religious conditioning, 
and theological conditioning and historical conditioning and um, everything that we call human culture. It uh, conditions the world that we see perceptually. Once again, perception is a learned phenomenon, all perception. Now, of course, other species, they recycle their perceptions without questioning them. But humans uh, have uh, forever questioned reality and keep changing their, not only their perception of it, but their experience of it. So, um, um, everything that we call everyday reality is an experience. And everything that we call experience is a perception and also it's an interpretation of perception. Okay? So, what is this? Well, you might say it's a piece of cloth usually used uh, by me to wipe my glasses. Okay, but that is the interpretation of a color, a shape, a taste, a smell, as is this, as is this, as is this, as is this, as is everything I see, is the interpretation of a perception. And that perception is a sensory experience and it is a peculiarly human uh, experience. It is a peculiar human experience. I don't think um, uh, a cat would call this um, a cloth for wiping glasses. So it's a peculiar human experience. And so, you know, I have elaborated on this point many, many times that, um, that the universe we experience is a human universe and it's a human construct uh, and today the most fashionable constructs are shaped by what we call the scientific method which brings us to all these laws to all, so which brings us to all these laws conservation of energy conservation of matter big bang uh, quantum field theories and on and on so how do these explain who or what created the universe? Um, I'll come back to this in 15 seconds. So where I left off was saying everything that we know, that humans know, is a result of experience. And everything that we experience is a perception and every perception is a learned phenomenon. So throughout history we have learned first, you know, to create constructs and tell stories. So we created a universe that we said God created the universe, the biblical universe, the book of Genesis. Then we had another story, Newtonian's laws of uh, thermodynamics and laws of motion and energy. Then we had a revision of that with the relativistic universe, which is both the special theory of relativity and then the general theory of relativity. And now the quantum universe, which has uh, uh, 25 interpretations, <laughs> uh, including multiverses, multiworlds, um, then the, you know you can look up the theories of quantum physics, uh, Copenhagen interpretation etc 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 many many interpretations and so scientists in general are what we call realists they believe that the universe is real there are three prominent types of realism uh, number one realism is called naive realism it means uh, the world is what we see the world the intrinsic nature of the world the universe is how we experience it. That's called naive realism. There's a second type of realism, which is also popular, it's called representational realism. It says the world we see um, is not the world as it is, but a representation inside our brain, a miniature kind of virtual reality version exists in our brain, so to speak, and then that is represented as the world that we see. And then there's something called uh, 
scientific realism which says, oh, it's not any of that. It's atoms and force fields and molecules and subatomic particles and waves and particles and all of that. So you see um, all these types of realisms are actually excursions into abstraction. All we know is our perception, is our experience. And then the next step is our interpretation of experience which creates constructs, theological constructs, religious constructs, um, mythical constructs, um, scientific constructs. And the scientific construct right now is very popular because it, it creates for um, uh, amazing technology. Technology itself is in a way um, um, an adventure of consciousness as it creates new constructs and then it uses those constructs to create new technologies which expand our experience of the constructs. It's fascinating. So um, the laws of conservation of energy and matter are constructs um, based on mathematics and physics which are human modes of knowing and experience but constructs nevertheless, useful constructs. Because of the scientific constructs, we can travel by jet planes, we can uh, communicate through the internet, we can do this stuff, I'm communicating with you, and on and on. But that doesn't mean that uh, these constructs are giving uh, us a clue to the nature of fundamental reality in which even the constructs are created, mathematical or physics constructs or whatever other constructs we have. So all the laws that are enumerated are human constructs as well, but based on a different understanding and that is that consciousness is the source of experience, consciousness is the source of the interpretation of the experience, and consciousness is the source of the constructs we find ourselves embedded in which creates the experience of what we call everyday reality. So when I answer your question this way, then in the deeper reality, there is no such thing as a universe. Um, there's no such thing as a physical body. There's no such thing as a mind. All these are human constructs for modes of knowing and experience and their interpretation in human consciousness. And of course, human consciousness is one particular species of consciousness out of so many species of consciousness. So what is the universe? Well, I would say the universe at all times is um, infinite possibilities, which is fundamental reality. Formless, dimensionless, timeless, spaceless, eternal, existence, always infinite possibilities, always infinite possibilities. So when you change your perception of how you see the world, you see the world differently. I'm reminded um, of something that um, uh, I think Heisenberg said, he said, nature does not reveal herself to us as she is, but um, she reveals to us as um, exposed to our method of questioning. Okay, so of course I'm paraphrasing Heisenberg, but this is basically what he said. He said, nature does not reveal to us as she is, her real nature, but as exposed to our method of questioning, I would say human questioning, human inquiry. Um, and so, um, um, what is nature? Nature is infinite possibilities. And that which you call you and me and the body-mind um, are all in that domain of infinite possibilities as all times. So I think I'm again paraphrasing Max Planck, uh, but uh, here's a quote from him. He says, when you change the way you see things, or when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will change. 
Okay, is it a wave, is it a particle, depends on how I look at it. Okay, so um, let's summarize. Perception is all we have as experience, number one. Number two, all perception is a learned phenomenon. As a result of learning to interpret per perception, number three, we create constructs. Uh, number four, we embed ourselves in those constructs and we call that everyday reality. And then uh, once we are embedded in that reality, we ask questions like who created the universe? Uh, what created the universe? Because now we, our universe is already a story in our consciousness. So, what created the universe? The universe you experience is your creation. And it's also a collective human creation, a collective cultural creation, and right now a collective scientific interpretation in human consciousness. In fact, my belief is there is no universe. The universe is a projection of our collective consciousness and its interpretation. Let's go back to basic principles. Everything we know is a result of experience. Every experience is a result of perception. Every interpretation of perception creates a construct. We embed ourselves in the construct and we view our, the, uh, what we call reality through that construct. It is our personal and our collective projection, so we create the universe. God, as usually conceptualized by human beings, is a human construct. Um, God, in order to be God, cannot be conceptualized, because if God was conceptualized, then God would not be God. God would be a limitation of the human mind. Ultimate reality is therefore whatever you call it, God, infinite possibilities, pure potentiality, Ein Sof, uh, Brahman, ultimate reality is inconceivable, but is responsible for all conceptions, all imagination, all perception, all experience, and all interpretation of experience. And you are that, I am that, and um, all this is that, that alone is. That's the meaning of the Sanskrit expression, Tattvam Asi. That's the essential message, by the way, of you are the universe discovering your cosmic self and why it matters. Qualities of consciousness or qualia end up as the projection that we call mind, body, and you. So I'm very grateful to you, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Send me your questions at info at jio.com. Info, I-N-F-O, at jio.com. Thank you. Have a grateful day. And today, by the way, look at the world uh, through the eyes of peace, harmony, laughter, and love. Once again, look at the world through the eyes of peace, harmony, laughter, and love, and the world you look at will change. Promise.